Okay, our goal is to learn all of the derivatives if we don't know them already. So let's recall that the derivative of e to the u is the derivative of u times e to the u. So for instance, e to the x squared plus 1 will be 2x times e to the x squared plus 1. Likewise, if we have a to the u, the derivative is a to the u du times natural log of a. It does not matter what order you write this in, you could write du a to the u natural log a. Just remember not to multiply these things together because this is raised to the u. So say we have 5 to the x squared plus 1. The derivative would be 5 to the x squared plus 1 and then times the derivative of this which is 2x and then times the natural log of the base which in this case is 5. And then we learn natural log. So the derivative of natural log of something is the derivative of that something. So it'll be 3x squared plus 5 over x cubed plus 5x plus 1. So it's the derivative of the stuff over the stuff. So if we have natural log of u, the derivative is u prime over u, or du over u, or 1 over u du. These are all the same thing. And then, also, if we have log of some other base, like log base 3 of all this stuff, we take the derivative in the same exact way, so it still would be 3x squared plus 5 over x cubed plus 5x plus 1, except then, because of the change of base, you're going to have a natural log of 3 in the bottom, because log base 3 of something is natural log of this argument over natural log of the base. And so you're going to end up having this extra. So anytime you have any different base, you're going to write u prime over u, but then the natural log of a in the bottom. Also, let's recall that the natural log of e to the x is x, and e to the natural log of x is x. So if I had natural log of e squared, this would just be 2. Um, also, that works for other logs of different bases, so this would give us x. And just to show you that it works for other things, say that I had this. This really just simplifies to be this right here, x cubed plus x plus 1. These undo one another because they're inverses. Then the log rules are really important, like the log of a times b is the log of a plus the log of b. And the log of a divided by b is the log of a minus the log of b. And the log of a raised to the b power is the same as b natural log a. So if I have log of x squared times the square root of x plus 1, I could rewrite this as the log of x squared plus the log of the square root of x squared plus 1. If you have log of x over sine x, you can write this as the log of x minus the log of sine x. And if you had something like log of x cubed, you could rewrite this as 3 natural log x. Okay, so now to get going for the derivative. We know this is a to the u, so the derivative is going to be a to the u. So you write down exactly what you see times the derivative of u, which is, hopefully you just said 3, 3 and then times the natural log of 5. And it's fine, just leave it like this. Make sure you never multiply anything into this argument and make sure you never multiply anything times this because you can't say that this equals 6 cubed. No, don't do it. You can't do it, so you can't say that this is equal to 6x. Not true. This is not 7 to the x. This is 7 times e to the 2x squared plus 4. So the 7 just hangs out for the ride. This is what's raised to the power. So you do the derivative of u, which is 4x times e to the u. Now since these are just m numbers, neither of them are raised to power. We can multiply them together and get 28x e to the 2x squared plus 4. Here we have product rule. Please don't forget the product rule. I know that because there are two functions of x, so the derivative of the first 
times the second plus the derivative of the second. Think about how you would do that. Hopefully you said the derivative of u over u and then times the first. So you could write this as combining the 3 times the 4x and write 12x. Okay, here we have to see that this is a different base. So we take the derivative in the same exact way we were with the natural log of u, the derivative of the stuff over the stuff. So 12x over 6x squared plus 7. This 2 just kind of hangs out. And then because there's this base here, we put the natural log of 3 in the bottom. So now I can multiply 2 times 12 and get 24x. I know the temptation might be great to try to simplify this somehow. You cannot mess with this 3. It's not 3. It's the natural log of 3. So don't mess with the argument. All right, this one needs which rule? Hopefully you said quotient. So we have the derivative of the top times the bottom minus the derivative of the bottom times the top all over the bottom squared. And now as far as simplifying this, this is a number not raised to a power. The e is raised to the power. So I can do 7 times 2 and get 14x in the 7x minus 2e to the 7x over 4x squared. You could even factor out a 2 from everything if you wanted. Um, now here, these cancel out because they're same base. So that looks like an ugly problem, but it's really simple in disguise. So this is just this polynomial. So the derivative is just 6x minus 4. It's a trick one. Don't fall for the trick. Okay, so this is chain rule. We have the outside thing on the 5, so 20, this becomes 4. Don't chew the chocolate. Then multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is 7e to the 7x. So now we got 20 and 7, which is 14, because again, this 7 is not raised to a power. Um, so 2 times 7 is 14, we need a 0. e to the 7x, e to the 7x plus 1 to the 4th. Here we need a which rule? Hopefully you said product because there's two functions of x. So the derivative of the first is the a to the u, the derivative of u, which is 1, and then the natural log of 3, times the second plus the derivative of the second times the first. I can't simplify this too much. Now you could bring out a GCF, which would be 3 to the x, and they each have an x squared. If I did that, I'd be left with, let's see, x and natural log of 3, because I took out two of those, and then I took out 3 to the x. I did not take out this 3. Okay, the derivative of tangent of something is secant squared of that same something times the derivative of that something, which in this case would be 10e to the 5x. So I can multiply 3 and 10, since they're both just numbers, and say 30e to the 5x secant squared of 2e to the 5x. Now for the application problems. Whenever it asks about increasing, hopefully forever and always, you think about what? f prime positive. Remember f prime positive, f is increasing. Say it with me, f prime negative, f is decreasing. Okay, make your parents or your siblings think you're crazy. Say this out loud, f prime positive means f is increasing. f prime negative means f is decreasing. So I need to find f prime. What rule do you need? Product rule. You should ask yourself these questions when you're taking the test. So the derivative of the first times the second plus the derivative of the second, 3e to the 3x times the first. Now because we have to set this equal to zero, we need to factor. Notice there's a 4 in both and an e to the 3x in both. So we bring out 4 e to the 3x. I'm left with 1 plus, I take out this, I take out this, so just 3x. Then I set each factor equal to zero. Well the thing is, e to the x never equals zero. Now this can equal zero if x equal negative one third. 
So that's what goes on my number line, negative one third. I, I am trying numbers on either side, so this is always positive. So if I plug in something like negative 10, I'm going to make this negative. If I plug in something like a million, that makes this positive. So I get decreasing, increasing. So where is f increasing from negative one third to infinity? Because f prime is positive there. Where's f concave up? What do you think of when I say concave up? Second derivative greater than zero. So take the second derivative, the derivative of the derivative. Okay, so if I take the derivative of this, I get 12 e to the 3x plus, again, you need the product rule. So the derivative of the first times the second plus the derivative of the second, which is 4 times the first. And again, you're trying to factor out. So they all have e to the 3x and they all have 4. So I could factor out a 4 e to the 3x. I'd be left with 3 plus 9x plus 3. So actually I could have factored out 3 as well. Um, but I have 4 e to the 3x. I'm going to do that. If I factor out a 3, then I'm left with 1 plus 3x plus 1. So I get 12 e to the 3x and 3x plus 2. Again, this can never be 0. Exponential is never 0. It's always positive. This could be 0 at negative 2 thirds. So I have negative 2 thirds. I test points on either side. Over here I would get negative. Over here I would get positive. And so we have concave down, concave up. So where is this function concave up? From negative 2 thirds to infinity. Equation, what two things do you need? Point, slope. Point is 1 eighth. They gave it to us. The slope, we need the derivative. The derivative of a to the u is u, uh, a to the u. So times the derivative of u times the natural log of the base. Then you plug in your point. So plug in 1. So this is the slope, which is 8 times 3 natural log 2. You could rewrite this with that log rule. You bring this up, 8 natural log of 2 cubed is 8 natural log 8. You don't have to do that. So it's y minus 8 equals, um, over here you could have said 24 natural log 2. There's lots of ways to say this. Uh, I'm going to do that. 24 natural log of 2 times x minus 1. Equation again, point, slope. I need y to the prime, so that's the product rule. Derivative of the first times the second, plus the derivative of the second, which would be 1 over x plus 2, because the derivative of this is 1, times the first. Then plug in your point, negative 1, so 6 times negative 1. Natural log of negative 1 plus 2 plus 3 times negative 1 squared, negative 1 plus 2. So negative 6 natural log of 1 plus 3 over 1. Well, the natural log of 1 is a point you need to know. It's 0. So this is just 0. So we get 3. So we have y minus 0 plus 3 times x minus negative 1. y equals 3 times x plus 1. Again, equation, point, slope. So point is e, 4e. Slope would be the derivative of the first times the second plus the derivative of the second, 1 over x times the first. Now plug in e. So this is where you need to know the natural log of e. Hopefully you know it's 1, because these cancel out, you get 1. So 4 times 1 plus 4 over e. So I got 4 plus 4 over e. If you wanted to find a GCF, you would multiply by e over e, so I have 4e plus 4 over e. So this is y minus 4e equals 4e plus 4 over e times x minus e. Critical values is where this derivative equals 0. So 4 natural log x plus 4 over x, where does it equal 0? Well, we need to find 
a GCF. So multiply this here by x over x. 4x natural log x plus 4 over x equals 0. So right here I'm going to set the top equal to 0. 4x natural log x plus 4 equals 0. The GCF is what? Oh, I made a mistake. I just made a mistake. I noticed. Uh, 1 over x is the derivative of the second times the first. They should have had an x right here. So these x's actually cancel. I'm so sorry. So right here we have 4 natural log of x plus 4. So our slope actually is 4 times the natural log of e plus 4. So 4 plus 4, which is 8. Critical values then is where this derivative equals 0. So we just factor out a 4, we get natural log of x plus 1 equals 0. So we get natural log of x plus 1 equals 0. So natural log of x equals negative 1. Now the way you undo natural log is you e both sides. So we get x equals e to the negative 1, or 1 over e. Because put this in the bottom, it's e to the first power. Relative extrema, fancy words for max min. So I need to do the, sec uh, the first derivative test, I mean. Derivative of the first times the second plus derivative of the second times the first is equal to zero. Now, the GCF. They each have an x, and they each have an e to the x. So we're left with 2 plus x. Now, x can be zero. e to the x cannot be zero. And 2 plus x can be zero when x equals negative 2. So if I put 0 and negative 2 on a number line, my test points. Negative 3, if I plug in negative 3, this is going to be negative. This is always positive right here. And 2 plus negative 3 would be negative, so this is positive. If I plug in negative 1, this would be negative, but this would be positive. So we get a negative result. And if I plug in something bigger than 0, I would get positive and positive. So this function increases, decreases, increases. So the max is at negative 2 comma something, and the min is at 0 comma something. How do you get this right here? The original function over here. If I plug in negative 2, I would get negative 2 squared times e to the negative 2. If this is 4 e to the negative 2, or 4 over e squared. If I plug in 0, I just get 0. Don't forget to look at the inverse if we have this inverse here. I'm going to ask you for g prime of 64. g prime of 64. We know it's 1 over f prime of something. This right here is the y value of the original function, so you just guess. What cubed is 64? 4. So now you find f prime, which is 3x squared, and you plug in 4. So 3 times 4 squared is 3 times 12. I mean, whoa, I'm all over the place tonight. Uh, 3 times 16, and so 3 times 16 is 48. So we have 1 over 48. Okay, you can do this. Finish strong, log cats.